video of Mike's Geek Corner with your host, Mike Quevedo. This time I'm going to review the 2021 Batman The Long Halloween two-part animated film released by Warner Brothers in the summer of 2021 on digital, Blu-ray, and DVD based on the maxi 12-part comic series of the same name by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale that was published in 1996 by DC. And I'm going to, for the most part, be reviewing the two films as a whole. So the graphic novel Batman The Long Halloween is one of my all-time favorite Batman stories. Might even be my top favorite. To me, this Eisner Award winner seems to be the story that most gloriously encompasses the most definitive traits of Batman lore. The story has everything that is great about Batman Year One. Legends of the Dark Knight stories such as Gothic, Prey, Faces, Blades, Images, and the three annual Low of Sale Haunted Night Halloween specials. Ever since I read it, I wanted The Long Halloween to be adapted at some point in some kind of feature, be it animated or live action. Christopher Nolan and David Goyer borrowed of it from The Long Halloween and Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, and it appears Matt Reeves will do as well in The Batman. However, for me, it was between the late 2000s and mid-2010s with the release of each subsequent DC animated film like New Frontier, Public Enemies, All-Star Superman, Batman Year One, and The Dark Knight Returns, that kept me craving more and more for a long Halloween animated adaptation. And so, in 2021, it finally came in a two-parter, as I expected it would, and it delivered the solid goods. It may not have delivered what I was expecting, but it delivered what I wanted. It is faithful to the graphic novel, while at the same time it reminds of the purpose of the existence of an adaptation. This two-parter is loyal to its source, and it also provides a level of generosity as far as giving fans some measured surprises and exhibits its own identity by carefully adding details that didn't appear in the original medium that may even make it rise above its originator to a degree, as did such classic adaptations like 1931's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, 1940's The Mark of Sorrow, Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Crow, and recent animated films like Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Death of Superman. The two installments follow the plot of the graphic novel that deals with Batman, early in his crime-fighting crusade in Gotham, working discreetly alongside police captain James Gordon and district attorney Harvey Dent, through the means of bending, but not breaking the law, in thwarting the reign of crime of mob boss Carmine the Roman Falcone, whose family members and workers, beginning Halloween and the following holidays, are being killed by an elusive unknown serial killer dubbed Holiday. As the Cape Crusader and Gordon seek insight from Arkham inmate Calendar Man in Catching Holiday, collateral events rise with the Joker stalking Harvey Dent, Falcone rival Sal Maroni, and Falcone himself with the intent in finding Holiday and eliminating the competition from another homicidal maniac. Then there's Harvey Dent coming across a connection between Bruce Wayne and Falcone, who has also hired eccentric supercriminals like Poison Ivy, the Scarecrow, and the Mad Hatter for schemes that involve the Gotham City Bank Depository and Bruce Wayne, who after initially refusing to launder money for Carmine Falcone, is now suddenly supporting the Roman, drawing the attention of Catwoman to the matter. It all goes even more intense after Sal Maroni's father is murdered by Holiday and decides to make an agreement with Dent to turn himself in and testify against Falcone. But Maroni's actually planning something which will grimly change the fate of Harvey Dent forever, prolonging the case of the long Halloween, with Holiday still at large. Screenwriter Tim Sheridan, who previously worked on the DC animated films Reign of the Superman and Superman Man of Tomorrow, knows the material very well and knows how to effectively turn this sizable, elaborately designed book into a very inviting Hitchcockian animated whodunit comic book thriller worthy of the same mention as other iconic Batman animated films like The Dark Knight Returns, Under the Red Hood, and Mask of the Phantasm. This film is both faithful to the comic and also creates its own experience as it delves further than the graphic novel did with the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Carmine Falcone, as well as Selena Kyle's connection to the latter. Bruce and Selena's chemistry is further touched upon here also. There's also more of Harvey Dent's fractured psyche displayed before his final tragic transformation. I also appreciated how the very last scene, not the post credit, gives a nod to Loeb and Sale's pre-long Halloween work in their third Batman Halloween special. The Penguin also gets just slightly more exposure here than he did in the comic series. A great deal of the charm of the graphic novel is the art by Tim Sale, whose craftsmanship with the use of film nourish atmosphere and kinetic sequential imagery is very much absorbed in the two films. Sale's art may not be mimicked here the same way as Darwin Cook's was in New Frontier, or Ed McGuinness with Public Enemies, or even Frank Miller with The Dark Knight Returns, but the designs in the long Halloween animated film are still effectively inspired. 
and has a solid line work that gives it a classic feel, the way Batman the Brave and the Bold did. I would also describe the look and overall aesthetic as a compromise between the Batman animated series and HBO Spawn animated series from the 90s. And on a related note, the second part uses its R rating in a very fitting and effective manner. The animation is also sharp, among DC's best in my opinion. The cast will very much do an outstanding job. Now I'll apologize if some, I butcher some of their names, I'll do my very best. Jensen Ackles, who had already sharded the waters of a Batman animated film in Batman Under the Red Hood as a title villain, brings a flawless balance between the Dark Knight's moody outlook and Bruce Wayne's dry wit. As Catwoman Selena Kyle, the late Naya Rivera exudes both lust and compassion. For Harvey Dent, we have Josh Duhamel, who conveys a sharp sense of irony within his conflicted mentality. Alistair Duncan smoothly reinserts himself in the role of Alfred, after already having voiced him for five seasons in The Batman during the 2000s. Billy Burke as James Gordon delivers the proper essence of level-headedness. After playing the Imperial Captain in The Mandalorian and Ratko in Castlevania, Titus Welliver returns to villainy as Carmine Falcone with Machiavellian-type demeanor. Reprising the Joker is Troy Baker, upping the madness considerably from Batman Unlimited. Animation Boys veteran Julie Nathanson is sympathetic as Harvey Dent's deeply worried wife Fielda, and DC Movie TV villain expert David Dashmalkian is chillingly cryptic as a calendar man. Other supporting cast members like Jack Quaid as Alberto Falcone, Lila Bursins as Sophia Falcone, Fred Tatashior as Holman Grandi, Jim Perry as Al Maroney, Robin Atkin Downs as a Scarecrow, Katie Sackhoff as Poison Ivy, and John DiMaggio as the Mad Hatter are all effective in their parts. The score by Michael Gatt is as captivating as anything from the late Shirley Walker in the aforementioned shows Batman the Animated Series and HBO Spawn, and it totally captures the film or suspense aesthetic of the piece. A minor gripe would be the absence of the Riddler, which although it does not affect the story, it still could have been neat to see a little bit of him, for after all, nobody personifies the essence of mystery than he does. I also think Catwoman's purple suit from the book along with the tail could have been refreshing to see. And that's it for me as far as cons. All in all, I'm very happy with Batman The Long Halloween animated adaptation. To me, this was very much the one of all Batman stories I wanted an animated movie the most out of. Hopefully there'll be a Dark Big Tree animated film on the horizon. So, Batman The Long Halloween two-part animated film, go check it out. Any fan of the graphic novel or just any fan of Batman should see this. It's one of the most definitive of the Dark Knight stories, maybe the most. So, that's it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please make sure you subscribe. Feel free to leave your comments below. And I'll be seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.